The Lord be with you. Thank you and welcome to worship this morning. A few announcements as we begin our worship. I want to say a big thank you to Linda Mack, our guest organist over the last several months as we've done the behind the scenes work and as we prepare for Andy Peters, our new minister of music and organist to begin. Linda has really stepped up for us and brought her gifts and her strengths to our worship. So just want to give her a moment of thanks and appreciation. Thank you. I want to uh, just a note that our chili challenge for Metro Caring and our soup shelf in George Washington High School has begun. So when you come to worship on Sundays or you want to swing by during the week and drop some chili, we'll be doing that through the month of November up through Thanksgiving Eve. So you're welcome to bring that. And also we're continuing to invite your giving for Warren Village Thanksgiving baskets. Warren Village assists single families or single parent families in the process out of homelessness. So um, invite your notice to that in the, in the bulletin. Also, there's a special insert today um, written by our confirmation youth, our youth who will be affirming their baptism today during worship. And they chose um, Bible verses and then wrote a little bit about those Bible verses. So I invite you um, into those, uh, reading them at some point. That would be great. Next week is All Saints Sunday when we remember those who have died in the last year. So we welcome you back for that worship service as well. Additionally to those worship services at 8 and 1030, we'll be gathering with anyone who would like to come out to the Memorial Garden after this worship service next week and say prayers. Um, the Memorial Garden is where we lay to rest ashes of loved ones who have gone before us. And so um, you're invited out to those prayers next week as well, if that's something that you would like to do. A few notes about this morning's service. Our littlest singers, our gift singers, will be invited to come up during the Alleluia before the gospel is read. And it's really okay if you're still corralling your little ones while I begin reading the gospel reading. So we're just going to make that work and we're going to trust that God loves us always, even in the mess of traveling time. Okay, so the gift kids move up during the Alleluia before the gospel reading. And we've run out of bulletins this morning. Great problem to have. If you need a bulletin, I invite you to raise your hand. I'm sorry to out you, but raise your hand and maybe somebody who's part of a household that has several bulletins can share amongst yourselves. So I want to make sure everybody has a way to follow along the service. That would be wonderful. And that concludes our announcements. I invite you all to stand as we speak a word of confession and hear a word of God's good forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we have gone astray. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. All people have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We pray together. Gracious Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Fill it with all truth and peace. Where it is corrupt, purify it. Where it is in error, direct it. Where in anything it is amiss, reform it. Where it is right, strengthen it. Where it is in need, provide for it. Where it is divided, reunite it. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading is from Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord.
Our second reading is from Romans. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law. For through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness, because in his divine forbearance he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, we are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You were feeling kind of sleepy, but you couldn't close your eyes because the room was getting creepy. Were those eyeballs in the closet? Was that Godzilla in the hall? There is something big and scary, big and hairy, casting shadows on the wall. Now your heart is beating like a drum. Your skin is getting clammy. There's a hundred tiny monsters jumping right into your jammies. What are you going to do? I'm gonna call the police. No, you don't need to do anything. What? Why? Because... God! furniture starts creeping, I'll just laugh and say, hey, cut that out and go back to my sleeping. Because I know God's the biggest and he's watching all the while. So when I get scared, I'll think of him and smile because...
on up here with me? It's hard to find a spot up here. Hey, gang. Does everybody have a costume? Yeah? Yeah, everybody? Well, not maybe not everybody, but most, most of you have costumes. Because why do we have costumes today? It's Halloween, right? It's Halloween. And can somebody tell me the date of Halloween every year? What day does it fall on? The 31st of October. This is really handy for us as Lutheran Christians. <laughs> Do you know why? Because today is another day, also on October 31st. And can anybody tell me what day it is? Yeah. Oh, it's Day of the Dead, too. That is true. That is Dia de los Muertos, right? Day of the Dead. Yes. Maybe Martin Luther? Yeah. yeah, Martin Luther. So so Griffin was able to tell me the story of today, which is there was a long time ago priest, a pastor named Father Luther, Martin Luther, and he nailed 95 reasons why the church should correct itself and do a better job and not hurt so many people. And so we call this day Reformation Day on October 31st. So if you're ever sitting around and you're like, gosh darn it, what day was that Reformation Day? You could say, oh right, it's the same day as Halloween, October 31st. So if you're ever confused about that, you'll know right away because you can remember it that way, a little trick. But we remember on this day that Father Luther and lots of people around him, you're gonna hear me talk about him in, his, in the story or in the sermon today, reminded us something really, really important. I'm gonna come here actually, because this is, this is super, super important, okay? Can everybody look at me? This is so important, and it, I'm not, this isn't like silly, this is important. There is nothing that you can do or not do to make God love you any more or any less. Let's tell them. There is nothing you can do or not do to make God love you any more or any less. And the churchy word that we use for that, especially on Reformation Day, is grace. I know, we have a grace up here. <laughs> it's really exciting. Some people's middle name is grace too because it's such an important word. It means that there's nothing you can do or not do to make God love you any more or any less. So when we have these big instruments and these big voices and all of this music, what we're celebrating is Reformation Day, which reminds us about grace, okay? So you can remember that October 31st is Halloween and Reformation Day. And Day of the Dead. <laughs> Gotta list them all. All right, let's pray together, all right? Dear God, thank you for grace, for loving us no matter what we do or don't do. Thank you for Jesus, who gives us grace always. We love you, God. Thank you for loving us first. Amen. All right, have fun tonight, you guys. Be safe, okay? Okay, all right, sounds good. If you can't beat them, join them, right? Learn that from the Apostle Paul. Mr. Mack sported a silver crew cut along with his very serious demeanor. He was retired military, United States Marine Corps, and he commanded respect without demanding it. You could have heard a pin drop when he walked into the room through the straight rows of our desks, 
We were already hard at work copying his notes from the chalkboard onto notebook paper, double spacing the notes to leave room for his lecture notes. He took his seat at his desk, waiting until precisely 15 minutes after the bell. And then he stood and began his 10th grade history lecture on life, politics, and war while we scribbled wildly. We studied those notes and we took the test and we moved on to 11th grade history. And in Mr. Mack's class, it was easy to believe that history was an ordered account of the facts. The lecture followed the notes, followed the textbook. In part, this was true. There are undeniable facts that have dates and key historical figures to go with them. But what we know about history is that it's less like a straight line and more like a murmuration of starlings. Maybe you've seen these birds flying together in the hundreds of thousands, twisting and turning and pulsing together toward an unknown endpoint. And those videos are mesmerizing, so I actually do encourage that. The only thing linear about history is that time passes. Otherwise, there are hundreds of thousands of voices that give us different perspectives on the same story. Our celebration today is one such many-voiced story. Reformation, 500 years ago, is often told in a way that makes Martin Luther, that ornery academic priest, out to be a lone wolf of faith and theology. Although in fairness to us, we're repeatedly exposed to lone wolf stories in movies and television. Think Die Hard and almost anything with Mark Wahlberg in it. But Luther was the one in the Reformation who lived to tell the tale. Reformers before him were put to death. Luther survived because he was hidden away by a sympathetic prince who protected his life. And his story survived because of printing press inventors and his bestie, Melanchthon, who negotiated the theology of grace with other pastors in wider and wider church circles. Otherwise, Luther could have been just another pastor who posted some good ideas on a church bulletin board that no one ever read. His ideas would have been swallowed up by the 300,000 revolutionaries fighting the German Peasants' War in 1525. Mr. Mack would be proud of me for that detail. But his ideas lived on in pamphlets, catechisms, and Bibles in the common language. Local pastors, sly politicians, and faithful parents joined the sweeping history in real time that pulsed with new life and grace there are Protestants in Christianity because there were meddling Lutherans who held the Church of Rome accountable to its theology and the people who were hurt by it. And in, in fairness to our Catholic siblings in faith, they have made a lot of the reforms that Martin Luther called out in the 16th century. Just a reminder that a little grace goes a long way. Digging into the backstory of the Reformation is similar detective work to digging into the Bible. The Bible includes so many people and their stories pulsing together into the larger biblical story. The highs and lows of our ancient Jewish cousins in the faith swooping into that first century story of Jesus, a Jewish rabbi from a backwater town, and the ragtag men and women who followed him as disciples. It would take many of our lifetimes to exhaust the riches of God's love story for the world through Jesus who called himself the truth. Which brings us to today, this moment, and us, and especially you guys closer to the front who are affirming the promises of your baptism in the milestone that we call confirmation. Confirmation is a rite of passage. It's a ritual that marks a moment into what came before and what will come after. A ritual that shifts the promises made at baptism from your parents to you. 
And I'm just going to slip a little reminder in here that God's promises are full and complete while our promises are partial and fallible. Confirmation is a big moment, but it is not a lone wolf moment. It's a church alive moment. You're surrounded by people who are asking similar complicated questions to the very ones that you ask in confirmation. Was the earth, the world, and the universe really created just for humans? How was the creation story written down if God was the only being at the beginning of the world? How did our faith and this church start and evolve? And do you think it will continue to change? And if so, how will it change? In what way? How do we know that God is really there? And is it okay to doubt God? These are complicated questions that many faithful Christians have asked at different times in their lives, especially at milestones like this one, and especially in times of struggle and stress. Last week, I led a Bible study at the women's prison with 12 women on the inside council of the New Beginnings Worshiping Community. We worked through the Bible readings and questions that their pastor Terry had given us. And it's been a couple of years or so since I've been able to be out there with them. And a few of the women I've known since I started volunteering there. And laughters and tears mixed with some seriously thoughtful moments. And I asked the women if they had any thoughts about doubt and faith that I could share with you guys, with our youth who were being confirmed today. They want you to know that faith can feel hard, but that faith can also feel like freedom. Freedom to be who God made you to be. Freedom to ask God to show you God's presence. And freedom to ask to have an open heart. It's really something to hear these women in prison talking about freedom. Most of them will return to community alongside of us at some point, but for others, they will be within those walls for many years to come. And the women are not talking about any old freedom. And for them, it is so much more than poetry. They have found that freedom through the love and grace of Jesus. When Jesus says that sin enslaves us and he sets us free, these women deeply understand what that means. That is not theoretical to them. Those of us who live outside of prisons have a harder time admitting that we sin, much less confessing it and our need for the very freedom Jesus offers through grace. But we know this much. We are free to ask questions, free to ask questions about the Bible, about history, about church, about Jesus, about our faith, about our doubt, about the mystery of God. You name it, we are free to ask it. Lutheran Christians have a 500 year history of asking, what does this mean? Literally that question, what does this mean? Although it was originally asked in German and now it's asked in thousands of languages around the world. The disciples in the Bible asked similar questions about what things mean. The Jews living before the first century through our Jewish neighbors today still ask questions about God, their history, and each other. And we are part of this robust history of asking questions into our present day moment of faith and grace. Grace, what we celebrate today, is God's unconditional love for you. Grace is God's promises flowing over you in baptismal water. The promise of God to always be present, to always take you back, to make your life Christ-shaped, and to keep these promises forever. Grace is this moment in time. Each one of us with a story of our own, drawn by the Holy Spirit together in this crazy project called the church. And for this and for all that God is doing, we can say, thanks be to God and amen.
may be seated. Dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism and for these people, one with us in the body of Christ, who are making public affirmation of their baptism. I present these people who desire to make public, public affirmation of their baptism. Trevor Neil Boot. Evelyn Rose Garrington. Isabel Violet Howard. Lydia Elise King. Carola May Tice. Claire Sophie Troutman. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for these sisters and brothers whom you have made your own by water and the word and baptism. You have called them to yourself, enlighten them with the gifts of your spirit, and nourish them in the community of faith. Uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism, and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Now we'll ask these young people in their profession of faith to renounce these three things that parents or sponsors renounced for them in baptism. When it's a baptismal service, we invite the congregation to join in. But this morning, it is just these young people to say those words, and then we'll be invited to join in the Apostles' Creed. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth? Trevor. I do and I ask God to help and guide me. I do and I ask God to help and guide me. I do and I ask God to help and guide me. I do and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God. Do you promise to support these sisters and brothers and pray for them in their new life in Christ? We do and we ask God to help and guide us. We invite parents and families to come forward as we pray over these You guys can youth. go ahead and kneel. Yeah, we can kneel. I'm going to look at this so I get your name right. Sophie, yeah. Okay. So you all want to put your hands on his head or where? We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in Trevor Neal the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
Stir up in Claire Sophie the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Stir up in Evelyn Rose the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Stir up in Carol Amé, the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Stir up in Isabel Violet the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Stir up in Lydia Elise the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Amen. invite the confirmands please to stand and get in front of your family a little bit and everybody face the congregation. We invite the congregation to welcome these new sisters and brothers with the words that you will see printed there on page 8 in the bulletin. Let us rejoice with these sisters and brothers in Christ. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. Please join me in congratulating them on this milestone. Now may the peace of Christ be with you always. 
invite the congregation to share a word or a gesture of peace with those around you today and invite the confirmation families to return to their seats. Don't forget to take your certificates and the book along with you.
Before I begin, if I may, I just want to say with all the choirs and the full church, I just feel like our cup runneth over this morning. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings of another day, another week, another year, as we celebrate the changing of seasons and bask in the beauty of fall colors, our eyes are opened and our hearts are filled. From the tiny to the majestic, on land and in water, we are all part of an extraordinary creation. We thank you for all that you have given us. Hear us, O oh God. Guide us, Lord, as we follow our faith into interactions with others. Fill our hearts with love and peace, that we may share your grace with those who are struggling and those who are celebrating. Teach us to love those who seem to have lost their way. Help us to remember that when we empathize and give of ourselves, we grow in strength and faith. Hear us, O God. We gather in prayer, gracious and merciful God, to raise the names of those who need your special attention in a difficult time. Bev, Ethel, Jim, Jess, Tamara, Soren, Cooper, Steve, Keith, Rachel, Katie, and those we name in our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. We express our support for those who have lost a dear one. May the family and friends of Carlos Beer know they are held in the thoughts of our community as they grieve. Hear us, O oh God. With hearts and minds open, we continue to walk the paths he has laid for us, living his gifts, filled with his spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper Jesus took the cup, gave thanks and gave it to all to drink, saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins, do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. This table of Christ is open to all this morning. Here we receive bread and wine, and we receive also Christ's love, grace, and forgiveness. You are all welcome to receive communion today. We'll invite you to come down the main aisle, and you'll receive a wafer and then move to the side where you can take either the dark liquid, which is wine, or the light liquid, which is grape juice. The small glass can be placed in the baskets that you'll see at the end of the altar rail up here. If you're joining us this morning by live stream, we invite you to receive communion as well with bread or crackers, wine or grape juice, and the words, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Together we will sing the Lamb of God and then we'll invite you to come forward.
please stand as you're able. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Lord of life, in this gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We want to say a special word of thanks as well to our brass uh, players today who are all students from DU, I believe, right? So thank you to them for being with us today. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. The living word dwells in you. Thanks for Jesus.